not too long from now that I'm going to go on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. So, Mr. Acuff so brought me here to the Grand Ole Opry in the year of 1948. And I've been a member of the Grand Ole Opry ever since. When I came to the Grand Ole Opry, I, I brought a, a song with me called Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait. And I had uh, done that song for a number of years during World War II at WIBC in Indianapolis. So when I came to the Grand Ole Opry in 1948, I brought that old song uh, with me, and, uh, and I did it first on the Grand Ole Opry, and the reception was so so very good that we decided that when I recorded for the Columbia Record Company, that that would be my first release. And thank the good Lord, that was my first release, uh, take an old cold tater and wait. So after that, you had to follow that with something similar in that same vein. So then I did the, I'm just a plain old country boy and sleeping at the foot of the bed. And, and <laughs> I suppose the rest is history. <laughs> Every week that I'm available, that I'm not on the road uh, with the, my friend Bill Anderson in the concert, uh, I'm here at the Grand Ole Opry every Tuesday, every Friday, every Saturday. I've turned her that way. Oh, well, the history behind the song is that, that I recorded it in 1964, and then uh, it, it went up number two in the nation. And then after that, Mel Tillis recorded it like, Ten years later, and it went to number one. And then after his recording of it, ten years later from that time, it went to number one with Ricky Van Shelton, and and uh, it was a hit song three different times. <laughs> what a closing number out behind the barn. That indicates to me that you think you're country. It's a joy talking with you, Paul. And, and, and boy, we here at the Grand Ole Opry are extremely fond of you and what you do and your talents. And we wish you nothing but the very, very greatest. Paul, it's been a joy for me to talk with you and to just be a part of your program and to be a part of country.